as you may or may not have heard, the S2 or Scribbler 2 is the latest addition to Parallax's robot family. And as you may or may not have been aware, the, its predecessor was the Scribbler. Now, the Scribbler featured a basic Stamp 2 microcontroller brain and was designed primarily to be a beginner robot, which featured a graphical programming environment. So it was targeted more for a younger audience. Now enter the new and improved S2, and apart from the color change, there are actually quite a number of differences between both of these robots. Uh, first off, and probably most notably, is that the S2 features a propeller microcontroller. Now the propeller is a multi-core microcontroller, uh, which means that the S2 is capable of executing up to eight tasks all at the same time. For more information on the propeller, visit www.parallax.com forward slash propeller. Now another update to the S2 are encoders included on both of the drive wheels. This allows the S2 to move in perfectly straight lines and also retrace its path uh, multiple times. There is also an updated stall sensor on the tail wheel so the robot can know when it's stuck an expanded hacker port so you can add up to six additional sensors or devices. Uh, there are photo transistors for light sensing rather than photo resistors in the scribbler. And this just makes the S2 ROHS compliant. There's a microphone on board so it can accept tones from other S2s or even from yourself. Uh, Bicolor LEDs for status indication where the scribbler just had solid green LEDs. And also the power LED on the S2 um, will start to dim as your batteries are dying and then blink when your batteries need to be replaced. So why don't we go ahead and look under the hood of both of these robots and see if we can point out some of the differences. Now keep in mind that opening your S2 or Scribbler robot does void any warranty. So be sure that you feel comfortable opening the case before doing so. Another feature of the S2 is that it's a fully open source design. So if you'd like to modify it, you can take a look at full schematics by going to www.parallax.com slash go slash S2. Alrighty, so now we've got both scribblers open, uh, the S2 and the S1 or scribbler, and they're spilling their guts so we can take a look inside and see what we see. So, first and foremost, you can see the propeller multi-core microcontroller right here. And then on the scribbler, all of these components in this area are what make up the basic stamp 2. Here is the hacker port on the scribbler. You can see it's just a six-pin female header where you had three I.O. pins that you could use, but those were actually also shared with the LEDs. So if you wanted to add an additional sensor to the scribbler, you had to sacrifice some or all of your LEDs. And then there was a five volt, a battery, and a ground connection as well. But on the S2, we have these fabulous uh, mail headers here, which makes it really easy to connect additional servos or like a ping ultrasonic sensor or anything with one of those three pin cables. Uh, you've got access to six pins on the propeller, and those aren't shared with anything else, so you don't have to worry about sacrificing anything else on your board. And then a uh, power and ground connection, and that power connection is at five volts. Uh, here are the bicolor LEDs on the S2. Uh, that's the blue power LED. And then on the scribbler, you can see that we just had some solid green ones, and then a red one. And then lastly, we've got the encoders uh, right here connected to both of the motors. Uh, that's this area here. There's a little fin that spins and then an optical sensor that can see if there's a you know, fin in the way or nothing in the way. So that allows us to keep the motors moving at the same speed, which allows us to move in straight lines. And then over here on the scribbler, you can see that we don't have anything in between the motors, so no encoders on the scribbler. And then as for the upgraded stall sensor, that's right here in the tail wheel, so let's take a look at that. If you take a look at the tail wheel, you'll see that there's holes in it. The S2 has an IR LED on one side of this casing and an IR photodiode on the other side, which allows it to track movement of the tail wheel. 
You may also notice that both robots have serial ports, and you may wonder why the S2 wasn't updated to USB. Basically, the Scribbler had already been adopted in classrooms that require that DB9 connection, uh, most notably the IPRE Fluke from Georgia Tech, so we decided to stick with it on the S2. So now that we've been talking about the S2 encoder advantage, uh, let's take a minute and look at that in action. Now, another really nice feature of the S2 is that there's full backwards compatibility with the original Scribbler GUI. So any program that you wrote for the Scribbler robot can be ported and run on the S2. So what I did was wrote a program for the original Scribbler that makes it draw square and trace over it uh, two more times. And then I took that code and ported it to run on the S2. So let's take a look at them side by side and see what happens. Okay, so here we have both of the squares that were drawn by our robots. Uh, this one by the scribbler in blue. You can see that it's kind of chaotic and all over the place. It wasn't really able to draw the same square each time. But our S2 square, we have nice straight lines, nice 90 degree turns. Um, and this is all thanks to those encoders that are included on the S2, which allows both of the motors to move at the exact same speed which gives us these nice straight lines and a nice repeatable path. Uh, really, the only variance that you see in the lines are more due to the abrupt changes in motor speed, uh, which can cause the robot to go off track. Now, you may have noticed that the S2 moved a little bit more slowly than the Scribbler. Uh, that's because in order to gain the high precision that these encoders give us, which allow us to make movements that are fully repeatable, uh, we have to sacrifice a little bit of motor speed. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're porting code from the Scribbler to the S2. You may need to increase the runtime of the motors in order to achieve your desired result. For more information on the S2 robot and its amazing feature set, visit www.parallax.com slash go slash S2. Oh, and happy scribbling.